of the International Secret Police. Shotzi Ring, an important personage in Tibet, blasts the hopes of Clint and Barney when he refuses to aid them in their pursuit of the octopus. However, when his son Dawa is almost killed by an octopus arrow intended for Speed Gibson, the Tibetan swears to help the secret police in every way that he can. We find them all in Tsi Ring's home now, shortly after the near tragedy. And to think that the life of an innocent boy should be threatened, and here in Lhasa... The holy city. The octopus is no respecter of persons or places, Sea Ring. His ambition drives him to do mad and terrible things. And now you can understand why we of the secret police are determined to track him down no matter where he goes. Yes, yes, Mr. Barlow. We must unite against this common enemy. If he dares threaten my home, what would be the fate of the peasants of Tibet where he allowed free reign? Same as what happened to the Chinese in Hong Kong, Mr. Sea Ring. They were being smuggled into other countries and sold for slaves. And the government could not stop that? Nothing has stopped the octopus yet, Mr. Searing. But that's where the secret police are going to be different. We're going to stop him, and how? Mr. Barlow. Oh, yes, Dawa. If honored male parent will consent, have I your permission to join the international secret police? Well, now that's an idea, Dawa. I'll think that over. I know that you'd be a credit to the service. Oh, thank you, Mr. Barlow. I hope that your thoughts will lean in my favor. <laughs> Clint's thoughts generally, Lane, kid. <laughs> Quiet. Okay, I was only kidding. Mr. Barlow, will you and the others do me the honor of dining with me this evening? I should uh, not only like to have the pleasure of your company, but also learn the details of your work on this important case thus far. The more I know, the better able I will be to aid you. Food? Boy, I'll say we stay. I think I've eaten less in Tibet than in any other country in the world. <clears throat> We'd uh, be delighted, Mr. Searing. I have searched the garden thoroughly, Mr. Barlow. I was unable to find any trace of the intruder. That's not unusual, Chief Depot. Octopus gangsters scarcely ever leave any trace of their visits. Only the result remains. In this case, this murderous-looking arrow. You're hanging on to that, Clint? You bet, Barney, for fingerprints. Well, of course, I'll find yours and mine on it since we both handled it, but I may find some others, too. That's why I've wrapped it in this cloth. Oh, uh, uh that brings uh, something to my mind. A dawa. Would you not like to present Speed with one of your bows and a quiver of arrows? I understand that he is greatly interested in archery. One of Dawa's bows? For me? Oh, golly. Honored male parent, you have spoken the very thought that was in my mind. I was intending to present him with my best bow. See? Here it is. And the arrows, too. That bow, Dawa? Why, that's the one you shot with. The one you like best. For the friend I like best, Speed. You saved my life. And we are the same as blood brothers. That is so. Gee, I... I don't know what to say. Look, Clint, Barney, this swell bow and these arrows. And look at that quiver. That's a honey. It is made out of yaw skin, Mr. Dunlop. Uh, it is very strong. Well, what's the pull on that bow, Dawa? Fifty pounds, sir. A handsome gift speed and one that will give you much pleasure. I'll say. Gee, Dawa, I don't know how to thank you now, but I will someday. Don't you worry. You don't know how to thank me. But it is I who am in your debt, Speed. Well, you're lucky to have such a friend as Dawa, Speed. I'll say so. Real friends are as scarce as hen's teeth. I feel that we have all been brought together for a purpose, gentlemen. And now, while my servants prepare the feast, let us discuss this octopus in more detail. <laughs> You think you will be able to take care of the slaves that are to be brought here tonight? See that they are imprisoned in the soundproof rooms, that none escape to give an alarm? I, master. Where shall you be? In Lhasa. Lhasa? Is that why? Why not? As Paul Meunier, I have good reason to visit the city once in a while. I have not thus far. And this fact might arouse a certain suspicion. 
Besides, there is one in Lhasa I would like to know. Who is that? A Tibetan. Lasho Tsiring, an important man, Kwan Wu. One to be more feared than any government official or high lama, because he is well loved by his people. You will attempt to win his friendship? Attempt? <laughs> I do not know the word. I shall command his friendship. Of course. He owns a vast amount of property, much of it near this pass of the Iron Dagger. Since the slaves will be brought over his property at night, it is well that he should trust me, since then his guards will not be riding his boundaries. God. He also owns vast herds of yars and sheep. I understand. When will you return, Master? Sometime tomorrow. If I am detained, I shall let you know over the shortwave radio. From Lhasa? Where will you find one you can use? Fool, have you forgotten the secret set hidden in my car? Ah, that one. Yes, I had forgotten. I do not know if I should leave you in charge of the castle or not. Yes, Master, you can trust me. Uh, I hope so, Kwan Wu. For your sake, I hope so. <laughs> and now order the car. I shall leave immediately by the secret passage. Uh, tell the workers to be sure there are no travelers in the pass when we drive out of the hidden garage. I shall relay your command at once. Uh, wait. Yes? While I am absent, have the men build a garage of some sort near the foot trail that leads up to this house. Once I am seen in the car, the car must be visible should anyone call on me. Else they shall wonder. True. That shall be done, Master. And now I shall go to Lhasa and see what La Shou Tsi Ring has to say for himself. Uh, Mr. Barlow, while Tsi Ring and his son are out of the room preparing for the feast... Will you allow me to give you and the others a few suggestions as to our Tibetan feasting customs? Well, I wish you would, Chief Depot. This looks like it's going to be a formal feast, and we don't want to pull any boners. Pull a bone? <laughs> Make a mistake, Chief. Oh, I understand. Now, first tea and little cakes are served. But since we have already had those, we shall go into that next room, where you will observe large cushions around that table. You mean we're going to sit on cushions, Steve? Yes, Mr. Dunlap. Do you not approve? Approve? <laughs> Boy, I love it. All my life I wanted to sit or lay on a cushion while I ate. And now's my chance. Uh, yes, Mr. Dunlap. And since you are not used to Tibetan meals, you will probably find it necessary to lie down before the meal is finished. Yeah, well, huh? Why, Chief Chipo? Our average meal consists of 42 dishes in 16 courses. I beg you, what? And one must eat at least half of each portion for politeness sake. For politeness sake? <laughs> oh, nothing at all, nothing at all. Boy, that's a lot of food. Well, you've been complaining about not eating enough, boys, so here's your chance. And when tea is served, one takes a few drops out of his cup with the third finger of his right hand and thumb and flicks it upward as an offering to the gods. It has to be the third finger and the thumb, huh? To follow tradition, yes. Well, I never used a teacup as a finger bowl, but I guess it's always a first time. <laughs> It'll be raining to you if you get Barney started at that, Chief Tipo. Hey, that's not fair, kid. I know my table manners. Yeah, so do we. That's why we're worried. <laughs> Uh-oh, there's the dinner gong. The feast is ready. Will you come, my friends? You bet. Sure, come on, boys. Is this going to be a regular Tibetan meal, Dawa? Uh, yes. My honored male parents made it a feast in your honor, Speed. Mine? Gosh. Hey, pipe the silver dishes and the chopsticks. Don't tell me I gotta eat with them things. Yes, now pipe down. Yeah, but Clint, I'll starve if I have to eat with chopsticks. I can't balance my grub on them skinny pieces of wood. And what if they had peas? Oh, but well, these chopsticks happen to be ivory. Wood or ivory, all the same skinny. Welcome to our humble table, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Barlow, will you sit here? Speed next to you? Mr. Dunlap? On the next question, my son, take your usual place on my right hand, and the chief Tipo will take the remaining cushion. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say, this yeah. sure looks like a lot of food, Mr. Searing. This the whole meal, huh? Oh, my. No, Mr. Dunlap. What you see are merely the hors d'oeuvre and appetizers. Honored male parent, may I make the tea offering to the gods this time? Yes, my son. Then will you all join me in the offering? Those who do this are forever friends. You bet, Dawa. Let's see now. Third finger and thumb and right hand. Okay, I'm ready. May the blessings of heaven be upon this feast 
and those who feast at this table. And now, the offering of the tea. <coughs> hey, oh. Clint, you shot your offering right in my eye. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Barney. I'm not quite up on this, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps you find this custom curious. But you all seem interested in our Tibetan customs, so I thought uh, we would die in a traditional manner. It's swell, Mr. Seary. Oh, what's this? It is a bowl of macaroni, Mr. Dunlap. And I'm supposed to eat macaroni with chopsticks? Will they give you trouble? Well, that macaroni's going to be kind of slippery on this ivory. We shall procure knives and forks, then, for all who desire them. Uh, what about you, Speed? Oh, 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 oh. The servant can supply you. I'm going to use the chopsticks, Dawa. I learned how in Hong Kong. It's easy after you know how. Yeah, but I'd starve while I was learning. Good old knife and fork. Thanks, Searing. You are most welcome. Ah, here is the rest of our first course. You mean all that is only the first course? Why, yes, Mr. Dunlop. Uh. Here is sweet sa, a Chinese vegetable. And here, sheep's kidneys and uh, Chinese sea slugs. They increase your strength. Quick speed. Slip me a sea slug. If this is just the first course, my strength is going to need increase. <laughs> Land at one. Oh, uh, yes, Chu? A visitor is within your house. <laughs> yes? The Honorable Paul Mounier. Mounier? The octopus? In this house? Well, what can it mean? Gentlemen, we shall continue our feast. And when we are completely done, we shall see the Honorable Paul Mounier. Mm. 